Okay. What's up, everybody? Uh, oh, man. Good start to the show. Uh, what's <laughs> up, everybody? I'm Justin. Uh, Vinny is still out on assignment doing work because that's what responsible adults do, not like myself. Uh, I am joined here by the one, the only Kelsey Bird of Peace, Love, and Baseball. I get that right, Kelsey? Yeah, you got it. And also co-host of the Babes Babes podcast. Nailed it. All right. So if you want a St. Louis perspective on anything baseball and life in general, I think you had your mom on last week, right? I did. Yeah. I had my mom on who is uh, an educator. She is a recently retired educator, but she specializes in early childhood and child development. So all kinds of interesting insights. I am very jealous of her. I think I have 23 more years (laughs) before I can retire. Um, yeah, and as somebody who for the first time gets to work with kindergartners for 25 to 50 minutes a week, I want to pull my hair out. So all the props to her for being an early childhood. Granted, I know early childhood is even younger than that. but uh, Truly, like though, extinct. yeah, it is a calling. She was yeah, meant for I, it. I do not have that calling. So more more, uh, more thank yous to her for sure. But uh, Kelsey is here to join us. Um, check out her podcast. I was on it, I think, like a month ago before the season started because we talked about the Wilson Contreras signing. Um, but today for the 100th episode of baseball and whatever, we're going to talk about the Cubs cards rivalry, and then we're going to dive into best boy band songs, which, um, I have a fondness for boy band songs way more than I thought I did before I started doing our research for this. I think a lot of people are going to relate with us there. So I'm excited. I, I, yeah, we, we did an episode, we did episode 99 yesterday. I've been trying to space these out while Vinny's gone. And, um, after I got done editing it, I put a Spotify playlist on and I'm like, oh, LFO, LFO, where have you been? And I, I know, know, sadly, I think, I think two of the guys passed away recently, but, um, and then like, there were some other groups that I knew the songs from like middle school dances and I had no idea who these guys were. There's some really good fashion statements in the music videos Mm. that we'll have to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, so we got plenty to dive into. So without further ado, um, I guess we're just going to start off with some baseball talk. Here we go. Baseball. Welcome back to major league baseball. Sort of. Taking a look at Chicago's two favorite teams and other happenings around the MLB. All right. Well, Vinny's not on the show. Oh, man. (laughs) You're batting a thousand. There's going to be a lot of editing in this episode on the audio version. Um, So Vinny's not here. So we don't even need to talk about the White Sox because really, who wants to talk about the White Sox? They're awful. But uh, I don't think anyone's going to be too mad about that today. No, especially White Sox fans. So let's dive in. The Cubs card series just ended. The Cardinals took two of three. Wilson Contreras played the hero slash villain, depending on what side of the rivalry you're on. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And he has fully embraced it, which... There's something to be said, like, I appreciate, like, he's not shying away from all the drama that is ensuing, I guess, with him. But all right, let's start with the beginning, though. Before we even get deep into the series, uh, the NL Central is really weird this year. I still, my first question for you is, are the Pirates for real? I keep waiting for them to fall apart because I don't see them as a contender in the NL Central. I am happy for them and their fans that they're having some success. I love Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, always love to root for that guy. I I like Derek Shelton. I like the way that they run their organization in general. Uh, Johan Oviedo was with the Cardinals last year, and he's finding some good success with the Pirates to start the season, which is great because I think that was a missed opportunity, which perhaps we'll get into more uh, for the Cardinals. But I think a lot of it has to do with the schedule not feeling being balanced the way that it typically yep. has been in the past. And as a rule of thumb, I am not looking at the standings or really paying any attention to them until at least June, that third of the way point. So See, I, I guess like, my long uh, answer is no, I don't think they're for real, but good okay. for them. This, oh man, looking at the standings is like all I have right now. Cause I'm like, the Cubs aren't in dead last. They're in, right. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But um, yeah, like I'm shocked. I'm really happy for them. Like you said, but then you look at the standings and it's like, oh, they're only four games over four, uh, over only four games over 500. They're not, um, it's not, you know, they're not world beaters at this point. So yeah. Everything is still close. All right, let's get into the series stuff. Let's talk about the Cubs and cards. Um, This series, I don't know where the Cubs offense went the first two games. The Cardinals looked amazing uh, those first two games. What was, I don't know, what was your takeaway? Obviously, early, early, early series in the season. But what was your kind of all encompassing takeaway so far from those first three games between the two teams? 
Well, as much as I hate to admit it, those first two games of the series are probably the best baseball that we've seen the Cardinals play as a whole yes, so yes. far this season. Like they looked like the Cardinals of yore. Which oh, is yeah. scary. Very <laughs> scary. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, I mean, for me, I was just like huge sigh of relief. I was walking into Wrigley on Monday night like, this is a new feeling for me. Like I have never not held my head high and been like ready to take on, you know, whoever wants to give me shit about <laughs> anything. But I was really nervous and I was like, I got to have some good like one liners in my back pocket. And but I think more than anything, it made me relate to Cubs fans more than maybe I had before. It made me have a different level of appreciation mm -hmm. uh, for the tough times and the way that you got to stick with your guys and appreciate what you can along the way. And I am really glad that they showed up and showed out at least those first two games in Chicago. And hopefully it is a sign finally, even though it took much longer than we all would have liked it to as Cardinals fans of things starting to click and starting to turn the page here. Cause we've got a lot of ground to make up. I, I feel like that is typical Cubs Cubdom um, that the Cardinals were kind of coming in, kind of, you know, wounded and, and battered a little bit. And then the Cubs were just like, hey, feel free. Take two of three from us. It's totally cool. Get your <laughs> groundings. And now it's just going to be like a straight elevator moonshot straight to the top of the standings for the Cardinals. And yeah, it um it was really, really frustrating. I feel like there was a lot of wasted pitching opportunities that the Cubs had those first two games. You know, yesterday was was fun from a Cubs stand perspective, Cubs fan perspective, but I don't know. I, I feel like this is definitely just the beginning. You know, I know Chicago sports media is all predicting like this doom and gloom and the Cardinal way is over. And, and, you know, this is the Cubs time and the Cardinals are going to sit in the basement for the next couple of years. And, and it's all good from here on out. And I just, I don't, as a Cubs fan, I just, you can never count the Cardinals out. And that literally pains me to say that, uh, but yeah, like if they went on a run and went like, I don't know, eight and two in their next 10, and then they were there, they were sitting at like the second spot in the division behind the or behind the Pirates or the Brewers, whoever it is at that point, nothing would surprise me at this point with that team. You know, I mean, you have Arenado and Goldschmidt at the corners, like they're still going to be pretty good. So. Absolutely. And it's so funny that you say that because we are very much on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of like, you're like, I'm just waiting for this to like go south. And I'm like, this has to turn around, yeah, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, no, I feel okay. somewhere in the middle and duke it out to the end honestly that's that's like my my hope yeah i just i it it these this series and, and i don't know why because like i said like we said they're they're not really close right now in the standings but like it had like vintage like oh three oh four dusty baker yelling at tony la Russa amidst the dugouts like it was just a really weird vibe that i was totally getting and i'm like oh this is i don't know if i like this this is not good <laughs> when both teams are competitive so um, my, my next question for you, cause I've never done this before, you know, I've been to games at Bush stadium, um, not Cubs games. So I, I am always of the, the ilk, like when you go to a game and your team's not playing, I'm not the type of person to show up in like my Cubs gear. I don't want to sure. be that guy. Yeah. Um, and when we went to Bush stadium, I think it was a Cardinals and Marlins game. So we just went and enjoyed a baseball game, enjoyed the stadium. It was a lot of fun. Enjoyed St. Louis. Um, but yeah, like. As a Cardinals fan, going to a Cardinals Cubs game, having your Cardinals gear, I saw it on Twitter you had like the microphone, you were doing little like spot interviews yeah. and stuff. <laughs> what is the dynamic? Like, were Cubs fans giving you a hard time? Was there like just some like friendly banter? Like, what is that like when you're in the enemy's like den, so to speak? Yeah, well, I would say it's a different experience based on where you sit for mm -hmm. sure. There, the Cardinals travel well, and honestly, like, I mean, we're not that far away, right? So no. there's a lot, of, yeah, and there's tons hours. of people, even just like me, who grew up in central Illinois or grew up closer to St. Louis, but they're in Chicago now. So right. I think it's usually pretty split half and half, the same way that it probably is a Bush Stadium for a Cubs-Cardinals game. And so that makes it at least a little more comfy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, on Monday night when I went, I actually had to use my company season tickets. So I was very much like on the like Cubs oh, side wow. of the stadium. I was okay. behind, you know, behind the Cubs dugout. And that was new for me. Uh, because if I, you know, I'm going to pick my seat, I'm going to sit over on the other side. Oh, yeah. Behind the Cardinals dugout just to get like the vantage point that I would prefer. prefer. Yeah. Yeah. And so at first it was definitely a little tense. Like, you know, when people who are sitting around you are like making comments that are totally directed at you, but they're like saying it to each other. Yes. To be like really snarky. Yes. So there was a lot of that going on uh, because there wasn't a lot of Cardinal Red around me. And my mom, who was with me. 
is a Cubs fan. So oh, she really? Was not, yeah. So she was not making it any easier. <laughs> and <laughs> she was really enjoying that, honestly. But yeah, as things progress, and especially as the Cardinals, you know, got ahead and it was a competitive game. And I think, too, that they realized that I was really into it and I was like a serious baseball fan. Right, I think right. that also like changes the dynamic, too. But the place that I'm never comfortable sitting at Wrigley Field is in the bleachers. And no. It's just, it's not the place for camaraderie amongst no. opposing fan bases. So. I'll, I'll be honest, even as a Cubs fan, I don't really even like sitting in the bleachers. I, I We're like getting too old for it or something. Yeah, like in college, that's where my buddy and I would go all the time just because it was cheaper. I was yeah. always kind of like an upper deck terrorist reserve. I don't know why I liked being up there, but I did. But yeah, the bleachers were, were where we went all the time. And now... It's been a couple of years since I've made it back there since the you know pandemic and everything. But like, like man, my back hurts. Like, right? I don't, you know. And there, you're squished in, and you know, being in my 30s now, it's like I don't want to sit next to the 20 somethings. Just like using this as a time to get wasted. Like, I, I feel like I'm like an old man yelling at clouds at this point. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you. Even as a Cubs fan, I don't even care for the bleachers. But well, I'm glad that it wasn't that bad because I've seen sometimes where it gets really really tense and you know yeah. that's never a good sign either so i think too the cubs fans are like in a better headspace right now because as you were talking about in your episode yesterday like it is just more fun yeah. for y'all right now and it's like you can be less bitter which i want for you i really do so <laughs> i think there was like a lighter atmosphere to it because of that as well i i've, I've always been Adam in to hopefully get to a cubs cards game i've also never been to a white Sox cubs game which i would mm. imagine has got to be maybe a similar amount of vitriol between the fan bases, even though they don't really even, you know, it doesn't matter. Maybe even more, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I have been to several White Sox games, not against the Cubs, but again, never, you could not pay me to wear Cub stuff at the South side. Yeah. Uh, and I know the last White Sox game we went to, my wife came with and she is a diehard Cubs fan. And she's like, no, I'm wearing at least one piece of Cubs gear to this game. And I'm like, they're playing the Orioles. Don't Stop. please, please don't do this. And, and I remember I told her, I'm like, if someone starts drama with you, even as your husband, I'm not taking care of this for you. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> and I remember we're sitting there and there was literally this guy in a Rizzo jersey. This was probably about four to five years ago. And he's helping this elderly old man up the concourse who's decked out in White Sox stuff. And I'm like, you know what? That's really sweet. Cubs fan helping an, an elderly guy up the stairs. And the White Sox fans turned on this guy and just booed the hell out of him as he's helping this little old man up the stairs. And he's like, I'm helping the elderly. What do you want from me? And they're like, take off the jersey, jerk. And, you know, and then every other oh thing gosh. afterwards. And I'm like, I looked at my wife and I'm like, see, this is what you're going to bring to us. Stop. Take that off. Yeah. But um, yeah, I yeah. The Cubs card sounds like an amazing series. Um, All right. Before we move on, we got to talk Wilson Contreras. Um, last Friday, or I'm sorry, last, yeah, I think it was last Friday, last Saturday, the story broke and, and you'll have to correct me because I don't have all the tidbits here, but like Cardinals management or the GM came out and stated that, you know, we're thinking of moving Wilson to more of a DH and was it a left field role, but then kind of went back and said, oh, left field isn't really, that's kind of out in the air right now. We're not quite sure. I know Wilson Contreras did an interview with the, the athletic that I was reading this afternoon saying that, well, no, that's not what they said. You don't understand. The Cardinals organization is very open. It's just that they want to take some time to rearrange some things. And I know they called up a minor leaguer or a prospect to play catcher now. So from a St. Louis Cardinals fan perspective, and maybe, you know, wading into St. Louis Cardinal Twitter, which I, I try to avoid because I don't want to cause any wars. What is going on right now with that whole situation? Well, we are all very much Team Wilson versus Team Cardinals organization, okay. honestly. And I don't know. I would say it's it's pretty split in general of people who are, like, very proud overall of the organization and those who are just constantly criticizing it. And I think mm -hmm. that's probably roughly Somewhere the between. same for, for every team sure. <laughs> at sure. times. But, yeah, first of all, I want to say that the way that Wilson Contreras has handled himself in every way throughout this entire process has been – made us as fans just even more impressed with him sure. like as a player and a person. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine a way that he could have handled it better, but I did have a couple quotes that I have saved here. Yeah. Uh, go to for kind it. Of glean some perspective on it from John Mosellock, the president of baseball yes. operations. And then as well uh, from Ollie Marmel, the manager the manager, but Mo says uh, some things that we expect, 
some of the things we expect, some of the things about the game we've become accustomed to, I think he realizes it's going to require more preparation. Now the question is, can that happen? I guess we'll have to find out. And then both Ali and Mo go on to say something along the lines of like, but it's not Contreras' fault that we're losing games. Mm-hmm. But it is like the only big change that change. they've made at any point during this historically awful start. Correct. So anyway, Moselak goes on to say, I do think the nuances of the catching side, we haven't had to spend a whole lot of energy thinking about because of what Yachty did for us. Mm -hmm. You know, that saying you sometimes feel like you had a coach on the field. That was Yachty. That's how we thought. Even though you might have a game plan, Yachty had the ability to allow that to evolve during a game, real time decision making. Mm -hmm. So that's all fair. But here's the thing. And here's the thing that I think most Cardinals fans are on the same page with. We all knew that Wilson Contreras was not Yadier Molina. Right. Like, no one was ever saying anything like that. Like, this is obviously a dramatic comparison, but, like, no one signed Daniel Vogelback and then was, like, pissed he's not stealing more bases, you know? like <laughs> yeah. that's He's not Ricky Henderson, right. right? Yeah. The expectations are different. And I think we didn't talk a lot about, like, what specifically would need adjusting mm-hmm. on – the back end side from the Cardinals because it was just so obvious that like, yeah, this is a fundamental change. And those things are obviously happening. Wilson Contreras skipped the world baseball classic as a choice that he made yep. to stay with spring training with the Cardinals and get to know his players. You know, we can only imagine he's done everything that's been asked of him. His effort is certainly not in question, yeah. but it's one of the things that I think is really interesting too, is that like during the signing of Contreras, both the Cardinals and Contreras talked about how they both prioritize open communication and clear expectations. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to believe that like we couldn't have been on the same page about all this up until now. So there's a lot that's like potentially lost in this or, you know, certainly plenty behind the scenes always that we don't know about, but regardless of what may or may not be contributed to Contreras behind the plate versus Yachty or anyone else at this mm-hmm. point, the way that it's been handled by the organization, I think is the thing that we as fans are most upset about or most critical of. Well, and I think you nailed it too. And in, in kind of just kind of what I've been able to gleam is like this situation has really united the Cardinals fan base with Wilson Contreras as a whole kind of, I don't want to say against management or against the organization. Cause I don't, I don't want to go that far, but like there's definitely a, a little bit of a divide in terms of like how you said, how things could be going or how they should be going. And in your spot on too, like Yadier Molina is a guy as a Cubs fan, I could not stand with all my being. But now you put him in Cubby Blue. I am going to like go through a wall for that guy because of the way he was, the, the, the player he was. So it it is very interesting to hear management kind of give that little little glimmer of like, well, you know, Yachty did a lot. He was like a coach on the field. And and I know I did hear some some sports media, you know, this week kind of talking like well, you know, uh, the the Cardinals pitchers just need to, you know, suck it up and, and not everyone's Yachty. They need to do their work. And, you know, this is just an example of them not wanting to take their job seriously. And they're being they were being coddled. And, and I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think it's just like you said, you have two very different catchers. And right. in, in the book on Wilson, I know, at least from the Cubs standpoint, was like amazing offensive hitter. Great guy in the clubhouse. The fans loved him. I don't know if you could say that now because I think he's kind of playing that <laughs> villain card a little yeah. bit. But um, I mean, it was well documented. Like I remember, I think it was Fangraphs or Statcast had put out something showing like when Wilson Contreras caught Cubs games as opposed to Jan Gomes, um, pitchers ERA and WHIP was considerably lower with Jan Gomes. Granted, sample size is going to be a little bit different, but I mean, I think that was well known. And like you said, I would imagine the St. Louis organization like openly communicated that with Wilson saying, hey, like if you're going to stick around for a long time and you idolize Yadier Molina, which he has kind of come out and said numerous times, like you're going to probably have to put in a little bit more work and we're going to have to work around these things. So as a as an outsider, it was kind of interesting to see like you're a quarter of the way of the season in and the management's like, all right, well, this ain't working. You got to go play DH or play out in the outfield and, you know, we're going to have you on the roster for like another four or five years, but you ain't going to be catching. So I'll be curious. I, I don't, I got to imagine he'll be back behind the plate in no time. I would think, I don't know, but. I think so as well. I, 
I think there's a lot of ways that you could speculate of yeah. speculate of what this is really all about. And there's a couple big things that I'm that I'll mention that I think are interesting is there is speculation that the president of baseball operations, John Mozeliak, is presumably going to retire after the 2025 season. He is the longest tenured uh, base, head of baseball ops in the National League. Mm -hmm. He's been the GM since 2007. And I think it was 2017, they gave him a fancier title of president of baseball operations. Right. Uh, but there has been talk that potentially there are new leaders stepping up to make these sorts of decisions and that are controlling the narrative a little bit more, which could potentially be why we're seeing them like not control the narrative the way right. that we're used to. Cause I, that was just the other really shocking thing is like, this is not the kind of drama. No, that, no. That surrounds this team and this organization. So that's just been really weird too, is like, you don't see things like that happen with someone as calculated as, and, and as experienced as John Mosellock. So yeah, I did think that that was interesting, but by the same token, it's like, okay, but why would the Cardinals then throw their new $90 million yeah. man under the bus, especially considering that their starting rotation is already half out the door. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Wainwright is retiring after this year, Flaherty and Montgomery are free agents. And so did they not realize yeah. again that like these adjustments would need to be made from Yachty to Contreras? Cause ultimately like that's on them, no yeah. matter which way you look at it. Right. So what I think is that I think it's much more likely that they are realizing that their long-term approach to starting pitching, and maybe this is something that other fan bases are not as aware of because, you know, we've all got our nose in our own systems, but all the pitchers in their system are only going to continue to struggle because it's not just the starting pitching in their current rotation. It's all the pitchers in their system. Correct. Yeah. There's a number of things that the Cardinals have relied on for some time now to get by with their pitching. None less than Yadier Molina, but with how the game has evolved with analytics, um, how they're not currently built with like the elite defense at literally every position, like right. they really have been in more recent years. Obviously the fact that they, they don't have Yadier Molina doing clearly what only Yadier Molina could do. And the fact that they can't figure out how to emulate that, I think mm -hmm. is a, a bad look at this moment in time as well. But, and even perhaps like the, the new rules, the ban of the shift and the pitch clock, it's only going to get uglier for the sure. starting rotation of these pitch to contact guys in today's game. So I, they don't want to draw attention to that because it could make it harder for them to do the business that they need to get done, whether it be this year and the coming years to ultimately find success with their rotation, avoiding like really a full on rebuild. Mm-hmm. The Cardinals like to spend money on players who are going to play 150 plus games like Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, they don't like to pay big money for pitching, but they also struggle to develop pitching. Right. And that's where it becomes really problematic. So you were talking about Steven Matz a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. So for example, like he is going to make $44 million in the next four years. Whereas like Max Scherzer is going to make that in one year. Right. Right. Yeah. So I don't necessarily fault the Cardinals for their approach because of how often you can end up like not getting the best bang for your buck with those high ticket starting pitchers. Mm -hmm. But this means that the investment has to be on the other end of it in your system and in developing the kind of pitchers that you aren't willing to pay in free agency. Yeah. So for now, it's kind of weird because the Cardinals are good at developing the same type of players that they're spending money on. And yeah. that's where we have the outfield and honestly an infield jam right now, too. Well, you know, if they want to take a full on rebuild and take a few years off, <laughs> it's fine. I When you mentioned that, though, that there is like that angle coming out on Chicago Sports Radio, like that doesn't surprise me because yeah. if you yeah, if you want to look at the potential ugliest side of it like that that could be a thing oh man what a what a goofy or not, what a i shouldn't say organization what a goofy like turn of events just between yeah. the two teams like it's so weird you know i mean you have one team who actively shipped everybody out you have another team who is underperforming right now but you know it's just it's weird it's a weird time i feel like for nl central fans right now everything is kind of yeah. in turmoil um, before we move on, I have to ask where, you know, we're, I think we're almost 40 games in perfect scenario. Where do you see the Cardinals ending up? If you had, you know, your crystal ball in, 
Is there anything, any big moves in particular you'd like to see them make that they could make to kind of maybe improve to kind of climb back up in the rankings a little bit? Yeah, so my number one hope is obviously just that the Cardinals can recover from this rough start and make up enough ground to be competitive for sure. the division and the playoffs. I maybe make some lucrative moves around the deadline. It's hard to say like specifically what yeah. I would want to see because it's early. It's, yeah, it's like a dead market right now. I mean, mm -hmm. who there's nobody that I'm like, this is their guy, you know, if we can figure out how to make this work or like, we also don't have anyone, I think as a fan base that we're like completely willing to part with that sure. as a whole anyway, that we're like, take this guy. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see, but I, I hope that they are competitive enough that it makes it worth all of that complicated stuff and making some magic happen at the deadline. Well, you know, the White Sox keep tanking. You might be able to get a few guys from the south side <laughs> of Chicago. I don't know who, I don't know if you'd want any of those guys, but that's um, true. we I might know. take Lance Lynn back. I was going to say, would you like Lance Lynn back? Because that's a whole nother ordeal, man. They were Steve Stone does not like Lance Lynn. I don't know if you heard all that a few weeks <laughs> no. ago. But I mean, he was on the media. He was on the radio and he, he was talking about um, the the interviewers on the radio were asking him, you know, is Lance Lynn's troubles this season? Because at, at the time he had like an over seven ERA. I don't know what it's uh, what it's up or down to at this point. But they had said, you know, is it because of the pitch clock? Can he does he not mm. have the cardiovascular ability to maintain having a pitch quickly? And Steve Stone went on this tirade about, well, you know, they need to get him to eat some salads. And I'm like, oh, that is uh, that's really uh, not the right way to go in 2023. Yeah, yeah and, that's and not the look, man. Not to, mention, not to mention you're both employed by the same organization. Why would you throw somebody that your co-workers with under the bus? But Yikes. that's neither here nor there. All right. Well, Can I say I want to say one more thing about yeah, the Central forward. Division yeah, in well, particular you because yeah. you do bring up a great point that like it's just a weird time to be in this division. I think one of the reasons that it's weird is because of the new schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ultimately hope that it like plays out in the long run that it kind of makes the Central Division step up as a whole yeah. and be more competitive cuz I personally am sick of the narrative of being like well like the Central Division and all Central is like never really competitive it's so, weak. so like Who cares? whatever yeah. yeah so my long term hope is that the Central Division teams all continue to be more consistently competitive not just because of that and it's it's fun to yeah. watch close races to the playoffs but it also is going to be the only thing that forces the Cardinals to make the moves and spend the money that they can't put off otherwise. They have gotten away with a lot mm -hmm. because of the central division. A weak division, yeah. Yeah. You're, that's an excellent point. Yeah, I mean, I just, I look at, you know, the Brewers are decent. They don't spend a ton of money. The, the Reds, I feel like once in a blue moon, they have a good team. And then they blow everything up immediately. You know, the Pirates, who knows? I know their owner is just as bad as Jerry Reinsdorf from all accounts, everything I, I read about Pittsburgh fans. Yeah, it's it, it it's just a shame. You look at a division like even the NL East or the AL East, which is so competitive and so strong, and then you look at the NL Central and the AL Central for that matter too. And yeah, it, oh god, we're slumming it in the Central. Like this is this isn't good. And yeah, I think you're right. If if there was a competitive chunk of teams to kind of push everybody to do well and to kind of I don't know do some baseball business and, and make a competitive team. That would be good for all. What is it? A, a rising tide raises all ships, I guess you could say. Yeah. Iron sharpens go. iron. Yeah. All those See, sorts of things. Deep, deep analogies and metaphors for baseball talk. All right. Well, let's get to the fun stuff. We are going to transition to whatever, and I'm going to make sure it's not on loop this time. Here we go. Now it's time for whatever. 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 All right. Um, okay. So uh, Kelsey came up with this awesome idea. Top five boy band songs of, you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s, whenever. Um, I know somebody wrote in on our Facebook page and referenced a boy band from the 60s. So we'll get into that. We'll, 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 we'll have to talk about that. Um, and then also you kind of floated the idea of any players that could possibly be in a boy band or run a boy band isn't the right idea be the front man for a boy yeah band. be I, like the five guys yeah, you know I, I mean there's not always five guys but a lot of times there are i i i came up with one which i i really racked my brain so you're gonna you might have to carry me on that one a little bit but i, I thought I, of Justin, one. i had like a like 22 person okay list good and i had to good. like narrow it down we appreciate so. the dedication to the <laughs> podcast all right so 
no really rules for this segment except just your your favorite boy bands. I will admit, um, I apparently am a bigger Backstreet Boys fan than I thought. Ooh. Um, I was kind of diving into the hits. I'm not gonna go, you know, into the deep catalog, but uh, they they got some good stuff. Needless to say, I remember though as a kid, like in middle school and high school. I wanted that whole boy band craze to die so badly. Really? Oh, because yes. we, because Justin. Yeah, I'm older. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So this would have been 98, 99 is kind of when that all kicked off, I think. Right around there. Yeah. So that would have been like sixth grade, middle school. And then high school is kind of when it started to taper off a little bit. Because then you I feel like then like everybody was a boy band and then. The market kind of collapsed. The boy yes. band market collapsed on itself, I guess. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to stop talking, though. Let's get into it. Kelsey, who is your or what is your number five boy band song of all time? My number five is I Swear by All oh. for One from 1994. I was mm, four or five years old in 1994, but I really fell in love with the song because of the 2005 rom-com Just Friends. Have you seen it? I know of it, but I have some, as somebody who loves romantic comedies and gets crap from my friends from it all the time, I have never seen that movie. It's honestly one of my favorite movies ever, maybe. Okay. Like, it's it's really good. Really? And right. that song, it's it's at the very beginning and the very end of it. So if you need to revisit it, that would be a good way to do so. I... I have to admit, my number five is also "I Swear" by All for One. Uh, no way! Which, yeah, it's perfect. Uh, we're you know we're we're connected there, but um, I, not because of the movie, because uh, obviously I haven't seen it yet. Um, but or, or, or I guess I'll see it at some point. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I remember as a kid, and I and I don't know. You might not have this memory because, like I said, I know I'm a few years older. Um, 94 95 ish was around the time my parents got our first cd player and it was like this gigantic three foot tall sat yeah. in, sat in like a, a cd player armoire i don't know like when when they made furniture for technology stuff, oh yeah you know? there was like ours was like behind a glass case oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you know we had the speakers this was a big deal i remember my first cd i bought was ace of bass uh because <laughs> that's what i was rocking out to in 94 but i remember this was one of the cds my parents ordered from like the sony bmg you get 30 cds for like a penny each it's totally somehow a scam i don't know i don't do you, do you remember any of that or were you no okay <laughs> so you would get like this monthly it was almost like a not a newsletter but it was like a catalog like a real thin catalog and they'd be like all right for five bucks you can pick out 30 cds and it was somehow legal um and then you would hmm. just cancel and and I, I feel like I still own oh Sony BMG like tons of money for all these CDs that we never paid for. But that was one of them we got. And again, I didn't listen to any of the other songs on the CD because who does that? I would only listen to the one I had heard on the radio. And I listened to that one a lot. That also kind of was a gateway to like boys to men a little bit, too, which mm -hmm. as like a seven year old listening to boys to men. I don't know. But um, I kind of dug that, too. So that was why that was my number five. Um yeah, I, did, did they have any other hits? I honestly don't know. What is the other? There's another one. Oh, I'm going to look it up really quick because I was listening to it earlier. And it was like, so I challenged myself also to not put multiple songs by the same artist oh, on this list. Okay. Because okay. honestly, if I if I had given myself permission to do so, all of my songs would be in sync. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I made myself do different ones. But I was like going back and forth between I Swear and... Uh, I can love you like that. Yes. Mm, that's the other one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, that one's really good too. That's a good one. I'm not going to oh. that. There you go. That man, I, it takes me back to the, I miss the nineties. All right. Um, Kelsey, what is your number four? Okay. If this is your number four, I'm, I'm just yeah, we might, we might really, have to really freaked out because yeah. I would be surprised if you've even heard of this group, but I hope you have. My number four is Slam Dunk Defunk by Five from 1998. I have never heard of that song. You're going to have to tell me about it. Have though. you heard of Five? I have. I ha They're going to show up in my top five. I'm not going to lie. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> well, the reason that I have heard of Five is because it must have been like in the late 90s, early 2000s, but Five and this Irish girl group called Bewitched did oh, yeah. like a concert series on Disney Channel mm -hmm. and they played it a lot and I recorded it on VHS and I would like my favorite thing to do if I, 
I don't know, got to stay up late on the weekend or something, was laying in my parents' bed and pop in that VHS and watch Five and Bewitched. And so that song just takes me like right back. And they have a couple other ones that I really like too. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see which one oh, yeah. you pick. Yeah, it's but coming. slam dunk the funk. Yeah. I will have to go back. Bewitched was a group that I know of them. I feel like I've seen them pop up on Spotify playlists because I always am running like, um, you know, nine summer hits of the 90s or 90s pop, yeah. greatest pop hits. And that always comes up. And I usually just immediately skip it because I'm like, I know of them. I don't know their music, but I want to get to like, give me something that I know. Um, I will have to give them a listen as well. They have a really catchy song called Say La V. Okay, I've, I've, I have come one. across that. I have not listened to it, but I do, yeah. I have heard of it. It's a good I, one. Yeah, and I love the fact that you're referencing VHS. Um, I was cleaning out our laundry room, and when we, my wife and I bought our first house, you know, we lived near where I grew up, and then we sold that house. We moved out a little bit further and got a bigger house. And when I moved, my parents had found all this old crap of mine. And lo and behold, one day they dropped off this gigantic plastic bag that had all my VHS tapes and <laughs> I, I found it recently and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. I don't want to throw away my star Wars box set in mighty ducks too. And um, right. cause they came in like all the cute cases and we had them all yes. lined up in like a chest and yes. everything. I don't even, I don't know where they are. So they're, they're, literally, there. they're sitting in like the crawl space in a bag and I don't know what to do with them because it feels wrong to throw them away. Yeah. Uh, anyway. There. All right. My number four uh, is also five coincidentally. Uh, and this one, I did not know who sang this song, but I remember this song being at our middle school dances. I hope it's uh, the one I think it is. And that is Fives When the Lights Go Out. Yeah, baby. When the that lights is a jam. Go out. It is. That, that is was the other one I wanted to pick. So honestly, we're almost like. Yes. Right so, far. okay. A couple things. Um, As I was, you know listening i had like my kindle out and i was like all right i'm just gonna go through youtube and listen watch some of these music videos and that song popped up and i'm like oh i remember this song i oh my god this is this is a jam and i watched the music video because i was like mr trl back in the day i loved i was obsessed with vh1's top 10 countdown and trl Mm -hmm. and mtv and so i i never seen the video before and i watched it yesterday and it's them doing their little boy band shtick in a bowling alley and it's them like singing and dancing on the lanes. And I that's... feel like I've definitely seen that. Okay. <laughs> and so yeah. two things uh, with that song. Um, number one, one of the singers, and this is like, it, this came out in 1998, which I know I did not hear it in, in the 90s. This was like a 2000, 2001 yeah. for me. But he's got, I don't, I don't, I never saw anyone wear this when I was a kid, but he's got a full blown like Argyle sweater on with black <laughs> denim overalls on. I have never seen anyone put a sweater and overalls together. That just seems like a, a sauna on yourself. Yeah. Um. He pulled it off, I guess. I don't know. He also <laughs> had like a, a a spiky chain necklace, which I totally mm. tried to rock in middle school because I thought Ooh, I was yeah. a punk rocker. Um. But OK, the, the, the other thing I want to say about this song that made me laugh is this is the the first five lyrics. Um. Don't get me wrong. I love this song, but this is what qualified as music. And I guess there's still songs like this today. Yeah, yeah, nah, mean, what's up? Check it, coming at you, here we go. That is literally like the first like yeah. 45 <laughs> seconds of the song. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so cringy. But the mute, the beat is so good. I'm like, this this is a jam. So um, I don't know what happened to the guys of five. I hope they're doing well. They're um, British, yes. Yes, they are, okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I. I'm surprised they didn't get called for the uh, the king. Um, the, oh, yeah. They weren't at the coronation. They weren't at the coronation. And I feel like they were calling everybody who was British to come perform. Yeah. So at least we didn't see them at the coronation. No, they they were there in spirit and heart. But, you know, I asked. So my sister lives in London and okay. actually in about a month, uh, my family, my husband and my parents and I are all going to visit her and we're going to the Cubs Cardinal series in London. That's right. Right. And so I was like asking her what are like our boy bands popular over there like what you know songs right do they listen to over there and obviously she said like one direction and oh. bts but she's also seven years younger than me so i feel like those are like the boy bands of her yeah her generation, generation too gen so. i guess technically is that gen z i don't or is that, i don't know or, or late sure. millennial i don't know i feel like millennials still get blamed for everything and i'm like we're approaching our 40s like it's yeah not, it's not my fault anymore so um all right moving from five Hmm. 
So three, what do you got for your third overall pick? Okay, so junior high Kelsey would have been really upset with me for this, but I have a different kind of appreciation for things these days. Okay. And I can openly admit, like, we don't have to. It, it can it can be, you can be a Backstreet Boys fan and you can be an in. You can live fan. in harmony. You don't, yeah, you don't have to pick one or the other. So I've got to admit, one of the greatest boy band songs of all time, my number three is Everybody by That's the Backstreet Boys, song. 1997. They have a lot of good songs, if I'm being honest, but that's the one that I would never skip it. If it comes on the radio, if it's on my Spotify playlist, like I'm absolutely going to get hype and let it play out. That is one that will, uh, spoiler, that will make an appearance on my list as well. Um, not not coming up, but soon. Uh, that is one, and I have no problem admitting this. That was one of my like pump up songs before hockey games in yeah. college. Yeah, and to the point, like, playing in men's league now, I'll be sitting in the car. I'm like, oh, I could put some Backstreet Boys on and, you know, psych myself up before the game. Uh, I may or may not do that. I remember I we brought boom boxes into the locker room and I had my iPod on shuffle, and that came up. And I'm like, oh, yes. And everyone looked around. They're like, turn this off. And I'm like, you don't understand. This is this is perfect for us. They're like, no. So uh, my my soul died a little bit that day. Yeah, that song is incredible. Uh, the music video is amazing to this day where they're like all different monsters and animals. And yeah, they did have some of the best boy band music videos overall they as well. They did. They did. So, man, that that's a great pick. And I, I don't know. Like, I remember when that came out and I'm being like, what is this? This is such a good song. And I didn't even realize it was Backstreet Boys at the time. And then when I found out, of course, at that time, I had to be like, oh, I don't like this song. This isn't cool, you know, <laughs> but now I can I can totally appreciate it. Well, I got to be honest. I think when my tune changed in terms of like accepting the Backstreet Boys for the quality boy band content that they gave us is in my early 20s, I did a show that was a musical version of a nightmare on Elm Street. It was called a nightmare on Backstreet. So it was like the story oh. of a nightmare on Elm Street with songs the backstreet boys that sounds amazing it was it was pretty clever i, I actually did it a little like storefront theater right there on clark street not far from that's Wigley's, awesome so. very cool yeah. wow that had to be so did you have to i'm assuming you had to like memorize a lot of the music then right and sing it yeah i want to say i sang quit playing games with my heart that was like my character song wow but then i was like the stupid girl who died <laughs> early <laughs> okay. but then i got to come back and do the everybody dance as, oh yeah as, as a zombie so yeah that yeah there was some good choreography in that in that video all right i'm gonna take us back to i believe britain for mm. this band and that is back for good by take that Ooh, i don't know that one. Oh, i want to say they were like a 90s boy band from britain uh robbie williams was in that boy band who oh okay he had yeah. a few like hits when he went solo um i think millennium was one of them that would have been like late 90s but yeah, um, if you listen to that, that's definitely been on soundtracks for like romantic comedies. You know, it's the music video has got like this sepia tone, you know, all these guys looking real somber, talking about how they miss, you know, their acquainted love. And, you know, I almost want to say looking real British, but I don't know how you look real British. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a good song. It's much slower. It kind of reminds me of kind of an all for one, I swear, kind of vibe, yeah. except uh, except British. Um mm. But yeah, definitely check that out. That's that's kind of a classic one for me. Um, I couldn't tell you. I know in Britain they had they were really popular. I couldn't tell you another song by Take That to save my life. Um, the the one thing I've noticed in watching a lot of because I watched a lot of the music videos for this was all these boy bands would have like one guy in the music video that like magically had a guitar and is just strumming along. And I'm like, I don't think you know how to play guitar. <laughs> I know you're lip syncing because it's a video and it's not plugged in to begin with. It's not plugged into an amp, um, but I don't think you're playing. And the fact that there was never a drummer always pissed me off being a drummer. I'm like, you know, you guys just use a drum machine. I get it. But like, if you're going to pretend a guitar, have somebody with like a tambourine or something. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, that was it's part of the like formula. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. The 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 solemn, you know, head down sad yeah. face strumming his guitar so yes yeah, so that's my number three take that back for good where do you think you first heard that song like was it in a movie it had to have been um well you know what let me look here back for good movie soundtracks um it had to have been from a movie 
It's because uh, yeah. I have a couple. I have a couple honorable mention ones that are like from movies. So yeah, so this came out in '95. Um, God, these guys look so silly in their album. Uh, but yeah, I mean it. It it. Let's see. Okay, here we go. It was uh, soundtrack for song in Brazil. That doesn't do us any good. It was in the final episode of the British version of The Office, which I don't recall. Um, it was also covered by Boys to Men which I don't remember that no. at all. And um, yeah, that's, I huh. guess it, maybe it wasn't in a soundtrack, but I thought it was, Oh, it was in, it was in an episode of spaced, which I know is another British sitcom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, oh, and it was in the boombox scene. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's, that was, it was mocking the boombox scene from say anything. I take that back. So yeah. Um, I know it was definitely popular on the radio. This would have been like 95, 96, but um. Yeah, definitely. If you hear it, you probably would recognize it from yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Love it. All right. What are we at? Number two? Yeah, number two. We're flying. All right. What do you got? This is a more recent one. And it might be kind of controversial because I would consider them a boy band, but maybe they're a family band. Can you be both? I'm not sure. But... I really, really love What a Man Gotta Do by the Jonas Brothers. Ah, yes. Yes. The that Jonas is a jam. Brothers. I, <laughs> it's funny. They, they were just on SNL a couple weeks ago, and I was watching it with my wife, and I'm like, which which one's which brother? Because I know I've seen some of them. I know some, I think one of them might tr has been trying to act. Does that sound yes. right? Okay. Yeah, the youngest one. I couldn't tell you what their names are. I know of them. I know, you know, that they they play their music and, yeah, and they're I was talented. A old. Totally. I was like yeah. a little old to be into them when they were like in their Disney Channel days. Okay. And I don't think my sister really cared that much about them. But yeah, I've always been open to enjoying their songs when, you know, they're played a lot. And I... Mm -hmm appreciate them for being super catchy i really like the uh i think it's called like it's christmas their christmas song okay. is awesome so mm -hmm. i would highly recommend that too um but yeah i've never been i've never followed them i've never been like a jonas brothers fan sure by any stretch but when i heard that song i was teaching group fitness classes at the time and it was on every playlist for like months i had to make <laughs> myself move on from it but okay yeah. was was it one of the jonas brothers that went and did was it dnce that had the cake by the ocean song was that one of the jonas brothers oh maybe that is a good song i don't know i don't know maybe i'm miss it might be some other brother of another band that i'm not sure is with brothers okay it could have been but yeah um i feel like i've i don't really know a lot about the jonas brothers i know i've heard some of their music like on morning drive shows driving to work kind of flipping through the stations and stuff but um yeah, I mean, by all accounts, everything I've heard, they're very talented. So yeah, I think that's that that counts. Family band, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, good pick, good number two. What's your all number right. two? Uh, my number two. I don't know if anyone's gonna remember this song. This was another middle school Justin, uh, bleach blonde tips, gelled bangs. You know, like I just walked into a brick wall. Uh, and that is the song by a group called Soul Decision. This came out in two thousand, and the song was called Faded. Do you remember the song Faded by Soul Decision? The title of the song sounds familiar, but Soul Decision, no idea. Yeah, I don't I don't know where these guys came from. Um, <laughs> and I don't know why. I, I don't understand. I've listened to the song quite a few times now, and I think I had it on a now CD. That's that's going uh, back a ways. That was that was my gateway into into pop music. Um yeah. a lot of references to yo, this is faded. I I still don't know what that means. I, but again, I don't know. I don't understand the slang my my students use anymore either. No. Um, trying to think what else Soul Decision. I feel like were they okay? They were a Canadian pop group from '93 mm. to 2005. That is much longer than I thought. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No one does it better. And they also had an album called Shady Satin Drug, which came out in 2004. I have never heard of that. Um. Faded was their only song that hit in the top 25 in ever so uh yeah they are they are long if gone no one that or, yeah one. <laughs> no yeah exactly it says um let's see in 2018 billboard named their video for faded as one of the greatest boy band videos of the trl era hit uh beside hit makers like backstreet boys on sake and 98 degrees hey. i i don't remember anything about that video being special i don't even really I think it had like a lot of like liquid motion graphics, like like way too much CG for a music mm. video. But um, but they were up there with all those guys. They were, they were, not, yeah, yeah. And it just has, it's got a, 
it's got a different vibe to it. Um, I feel like a lot of boy band music, as long as it's got like a good background track, you're set. Like the lyrics yeah. don't need to be good. The singing probably doesn't even have to be that good. But as long as it's got that Correct. catchy like hook, you're fine. Yes. So, yeah, that's another one Um, I would recommend. I, I don't know. It's not earth shattering, but it's it'll get you going. Yeah. So there you go. All right. We've made it to the finals. Uh, number one, uh, I'm assuming I know based on some of what you said earlier, I'm assuming I know what group this is. But tell us, what is your number one? Well, I'd like to break all the rules because I have two number ones. Oh, well, um, okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, but I have a very specific reason of why I have two sure, number ones. Sure. Because I couldn't just pick an in sync ballad and I couldn't just pick an in sync banger. I had to pick a ballad and a banger. Well, so, because, yeah, you have to. Yeah. You're, you're and, lucky Vinny's not on the show because Vinny gets so mad at me when I do this because I used to do this all the time. To oh, okay. Him. You've done it. Then oh, I'm not I, I like, used... I'm not. It was, it was a weekly basis where I would have two number ones and two number fives and he would get so mad. I'm sure he's going to listen to this and text me, but um, that is, to I will allow it. It's totally okay. Go okay. for it. Okay. So I actually had solidified this. I had picked it out and that was the title song from their 2000 album, Sync's No Strings Attached. Mm. There's a lot of really good upbeat songs by Sync, but honestly, this is the one that like, even today, if I'm like, like I had a good audition last week and I was driving home, like I had like a half hour drive and I played mm. this song on repeat. Yeah, and yeah no my problem best with life. that. So that's the one I'm going with, No Strings Attached. I know you've probably heard like Tearing Out My Heart, Bye Bye Bye, mm -hmm. I Want You Back, all great ones revisit no strings, no strings attached, attached. Yeah. now is that is that the one where they're no that's not bye is bye 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 is the one where they're like toys right is that the one where they're toys yes but they're okay. kind of, so they're puppets they're, in they're no like um attached. like marionettes right kind yeah. of almost okay yeah all right okay all right and then what was the you so the ballad the ballad is i heard this one as i was you know doing my research and i was like this this is actually maybe the best song ever by NSYNC and they do not do a bad ballad. So that's saying a lot. The one I'm going to go with is from the 2001 celebrity album. It's okay. called selfish. I have not heard that one. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. Well, I see when you, when you say ballad, I'm thinking of like eighties hair metal rock ballad. So I need to, <laughs> I, I will have to familiarize myself. You with know what I mean? Like, ballads. I mean, so Backstreet Boys has like, you know, everybody is definitely like yes, a banger the, the banger. And then as long as you love me. Is like right. When, when that music starts and it's got the slow tempo yeah. and like, it's like, listen, it, you know, like yeah. the precursor to ASMR, I guess when they're real quiet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you you know, it's like, oh boy, here we go. This is gonna be, you know, a tale of unrequited love that that something has gone wrong in these these gentlemen's lives. But well, I I dig it. I will have to check that out. Um, somebody who knows a few NSYNC songs, just the hits, I will check out the I will check that out. Yeah, I want to say my, the first CD that I ever owned was like the NSYNC title album yeah. with like tearing up my heart it was like sure. the first track sure. so i was like 10 and 11 i think when mm -hmm. no strings attached and selfish came out and i burned those cds into the ground like i just played them on repeat danced in my mirror Ugh. practicing like the the um you know the core oh, yeah and stuff yeah all right well to go along with another banger, you already mentioned this. My number one in in for a multitude of reasons has got to be, you know, Backstreet's Back by Backstreet Boys. Um, I always took myself as more of an NSYNC guy if I had to lean really? one way or the other. But the more I listened, I'm like, oh, I kind of find myself. There was even a few songs I was listening to for this show that I'm like, oh, that's a Backstreet Boys song. I don't know what I thought it was, but I did not realize it was them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say they probably have the most like widely recognized yes. boy band songs that like right. everybody would yeah. know. But yeah, so that's my number one. Um, Nothing too earth shattering, just, you know, favorite song. I, like I said, favorite. That for... is so solid though, because yeah. like I said, as someone who is a lifelong, like anti Backstreet Boys, I had to put that one on the list because oh, it's yeah. just so good. You've made amends. You've made peace with yeah. that. Right. Um, I do have an, a few honorable mentions that if you want to get to yours and then we can wrap up with write-ins. Um, yeah. So I have, <laughs> I have honorable mention to every NSYNC song. Okay. Uh, including, including Trash in the Camp from the Tarzan's soundtrack. 
I didn't uh, even know fun. they were on that soundtrack. Yeah, they did Trash in the Camp with Phil Collins, who oh, wrote yeah. all the music for the yep. Tarzan soundtrack. So that was really cool. They also did a collab with Gloria Estefan okay. uh, for a movie called Music of My Heart on a yes. song called Music of My Heart, which is really great. Okay. Also, we like briefly mentioned 98 Degrees, didn't talk about any of their songs. I like a handful of theirs. Uh, my favorite one is True to Your Heart, which is from the Mulan soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I also didn't have a One Direction song on here because I couldn't pick one. I am not embarrassed to say that I think that they have a ridiculous amount of really good songs. They do. They do. Yeah. And uh, Dynamite and Butter by BTS as well. That Okay. So that is something... I honestly could not tell you a single BTS song. Those are the only ones I know. And I know like they are a worldwide phenomenon. And I've seen some of the guys interviewed on like, um, like, you know, late night TV, like on Colbert or Kimmel or or Jim Fallon or whatever. But yeah, I I feel like I need to at least at some point do a deep dive and just be like, okay, what is this all about? Because I feel like I'm the only one left on earth that has never heard one of their songs. Um, I bet if you, especially dynamite, like butter is, I think more popular like right now. Sure. Um, I, you've probably heard them. Okay. They're just all right, well, super I will... catchy. Yeah. And you know what? I feel like that's all you need. Like it, and, and I think, right. I think it's kind of funny growing up now in, in my thirties, like in my late teens. And I'll be curious if you feel this way in my late teens, early twenties, it was like, Oh, you have to like a certain type of music because like, that's your friend group or that's your, you know, Oh, you're too old for that type of music. And now it's like, I, I just don't care. I'm going to like what I like. And yeah. I don't care what comes on my sh- I still have my iPod plugged into my car through uh, the USB. Um, yes, it's from 2009 because uh, my mini died a while back and that really bummed me out. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like now I just don't care. Boy band, rock song, rap song. I don't care. I'm just going to like what I like. All right, I do have I have three honorable mentions. Uh, Tearing Up My Heart by NSYNC. That mm-hmm. is probably my favorite NSYNC song for one reason. And so uh, I remember... Uh, <sighs> When, when did that album come out? Was that 90? Yeah, late 90s. Okay, so 97. That seems early. I thought it was later than that. But all right. Yeah. Was that, or maybe that was when the single released, maybe? I could see that being when that album came out Album came out because they then they did another one before they did No Strings Attached and okay. um, Celebrity, which okay. were right yeah. in a row, too. So this is they were busy for a they few were. years. May 26, 1997. Okay, so the, the only the only backstory to this, the reason I like the song is I remember um, one of our family's friends, uh, the mom and the dad and, and their daughters came over and we grew up with them, went on family vacations. And the mom was an accountant for like a record label. So they would get a bunch of new music in all the time to kind of listen to and stuff. And, you know, they came over for dinner. We got like pizzas or whatever. And um, their oldest daughter was my age and we would hang out, listen to music, trade CDs and stuff. And she's like, oh, my God, I got this new CD from my mom's label. Check this out. They're called NSYNC. And I'm looking at this. And, and then this is like me. I'm Mr. Like Wallflowers, Chumbawamba, Bare Naked Ladies, uh, Weezer. Like, I don't have time for this stuff. And I remember she put it on. And I'm like, these guys suck. Like, what? <laughs> again, I was 10. So I didn't know any better. I'm like, oh, yeah, these, these they're great. Yeah, I'm glad you like them because I didn't want to be mean. And they left. And I told my parents, I'm like, oh, my God, she had this music. It was so bad. These guys are never going to go anywhere. And I shit you not. The very next day, I turned on either VH1 or MTV. And what song was playing? Tearing up my heart. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know anything about the music business. So um, I, I do love that song now. I It's grown. I've grown on me um quit playing games with my heart by backstreet boys i really like and and this was one in middle school i loved this song totally forgot about the band totally forgot about the song until we talked about doing this and that is every other time by lfo oh yeah that is such a catchy song and another one with like the typical like the one guy's playing guitar in this in the music yeah whatever but um such a catchy song um yeah just that those are my honorable mentions so all right. Do we want to get to, I have a list of all the people that wrote in on Twitter and Facebook and you can kind of give me a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down on whether or not you agree, if that's okay. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, JP Yankees girl on Twitter wrote in and said, I want it that way by Backstreet Boys. And it's uh, going to be me by NSYNC, mm-hmm. which I think are both bangers. Those are good hits. Absolutely. Uh, Melissa K wrote in, she said, ah, new kids on the block, hanging tough and you got the right stuff. I'm glad she mentioned those because those are definitely worth having on this list. And see, that is like, that was right before 
I have no recollection of that like wave of music. Yeah, me neither. No, I was it was right before I got into music. So, but I'm yeah. thankful to those who do because now we know about them. Those they, that came they hold for up. us. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> they, they do. Thank goodness for. Oh, what's Mark Wahlberg's brother's name that was in at KOTB? I can't think of his name. Oh, Don was Donnie. Donnie? Was it Donnie was Wahlberg? It? I think it's yeah, Donnie. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> retro. Yes, Retro J on Twitter wrote in and said, "Mr. Telephone Man" by New Edition. I'll be honest, I don't know that song at all. So I knew it because it was also recorded by the girl group Dream in the early 2000s. Oh, Dream! Um, but New Edition is. Was like Bobby Brown's group, right? Oh, I think you're right. I yeah, think you're right. I'm pretty yes. sure. And and I think they were like late 70s, early 80s. Okay, maybe. Oh God, now I want to pull up my iTunes list and listen to Dream. But I knew right? it because of Dream. Yeah. Was it? Is it? He loves you not. Is that their song? Yes, I, oh I think so. Is that Dream too? I think so. That was yeah. that was a uh, yeah, a Puff Daddy production, I think. Right? I think he was their manager or that producer right. or something. Uh, Brandon, a uh, guy I play hockey with, wrote in and said, "Incomplete" by the Backstreet Boys. I am somewhat familiar with that song. Uh, Eric, former music teacher that I used to work with, he skipped the NSYNC route and went straight to Justin Timberlake and said, "Rock your body." All right. Well, that is it's technically not a boy band song, but yeah, because we're going to need to do another top five Justin Timberlake. Oh, songs. man. Oh, God. That, that was I felt like the guy from Office Space growing up where with Michael Bolton and, and people were like, you have Justin Timberlake, Sam. And I'm like, I was here first. You know, yeah. And I think you told me when you were. I think I did. Yeah. I'm like, why should I... you were like, that's why I hate it. Yeah. Boy, like, why should I change my era. name? He sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the one that sucks. Um. Eric, I'm sorry, not Eric. Tony wrote in and said, bye, 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 by the Backstreet Boys. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, here's the one I kind of... Bye, bye, little... bye is in sync. Oh, did I? Oh, sorry. I just upset a whole fan base. They're going to be coming <laughs> after me. Um, Karen. Okay, so Karen was another co former colleague of mine. Technically, this is a boy band. Uh, she said, I'm a believer by the monkeys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My, my, I grew up with my mom. She... Well, I shouldn't say I grew up with my mom. My mom, uh, as I grew up, was a huge Monkees fan. And that show would occasionally be on TV, like when she could find it in reruns. And then oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> they would go in spurts where she had all the box albums and our box hits and all that. Um, OK, Laura, who actually uh, is one of our friends from St. Louis, um, lives over. Or she used to live by the City Museum. Uh, Laura says back for good by take that. Good call back here by B.B. Mac. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Yeah, that was, that I did was, consider throwing that on my I list I was thinking well. that, too. She oh, said, all in sync and Backstreet Boys is solid. On Bended Knee by Boys to Men has that sweet bass spoken part halfway through. Yes. <laughs> uh, and she said, and though Motown, Motown Philly is their hottest jam. Um, there, mm. there is an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't know if you if you enjoy that show where they're trying to uh, – they're, they're, they're participating in a um, – uh what am i trying to say here boys to men cover competition and they have the sweaters <laughs> on and they're oh practicing gosh. it's 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 really good um she also said does hansen count because they should uh yeah i, I think I, if the jonas brothers count hansen counts yeah i still remember the first time i heard mbop and i was blown yeah. away i was at a bowling alley birthday party <laughs> why that is entrenched in my brain i don't know well they uh, just did um I don't know if they did this at all the ballparks, but I think at a number of them, they did like boy band nights. Oh, really? As like okay. theme nights. They did it on May 5th at Bush Stadium. So okay. I'm not sure if they did it at a lot of other stadiums, but I did hear some other teams doing it as well. And yeah, they were playing Mbop before the game on boy band night. So it's a good song. It's a good song. All of St. Louis agrees. Good. Well, hey, that's something Chicago and St. Louis can agree on. There's not much Hell that they yeah. agree on, so we might as well agree <laughs> on that. Uh, Ashley writes in and said, all of Backstreet Boys, no one else. Wow, that's those are fighting words, I think. Um, all right. Yeah, and then my, she's she's in she's born in like 89, 90. I can guarantee it. She is. You're right. I think she was maybe yeah. even a little bit earlier than that. But yes. Um, and then, OK, my wife wrote in. She gave us her top five. Erica says, number five, Burning Up by Jonas Brothers. Couldn't tell you. I do not know that song. Uh, so Much in Love by All for One. Oh, we um, didn't know that one. I couldn't tell you that mm. one. Now, this is, I'm going to have to talk to her about this because she is like the Grinch when it comes to Christmas. Uh, she said, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays by NSYNC. So, uh, yeah, I almost mentioned that one as well. That 
That it is. is. I, that is I like song. every year am just waiting for it to be like November 1st. I'm like, yes. right, I can listen to. She gives that, me such yeah. a hard time because she is like Mrs. Halloween and slasher movie. And once Halloween's over, I'm like, all right, now we can get to the good holidays. Like, let's let's move it along here. Um, OK, number two, Hanson, Where's the Love? That's a good song. Mm, that is a good one. And then number one, she kind of takes a cop out here. Any and all Backstreet Boys song. But if I had to pick a favorite, everybody Backstreet's back. Yes. Anyway, so, well, Kelsey, you've made it through a whatever. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's it's a marathon, right? It is. Can I mention one more write in that yeah, I saw? Yeah, what do you got? So, this is really fun. Uh, Polo Asensio, who is the Spanish play by play yes. announcer for the St. Louis Cardinals, he is like beloved by St. Louis fans for being a boy band aficionado. Oh, so, okay. his favorites were he had a, a list of One Direction, but Story of My Life, Steal My Girl, Night Changes. Oh. Love all those. He also had some Joe Bros, Love Bug, Burning Up. SOS sucker. All of those are the ones that like, if you're hearing it on the radio, like on you're your commute, yeah. those are the ones. Okay. Yeah. He also said young blood by five seconds of summer, which is like oh, a newer yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And then end of the road by boys to men. Of course. And I'm kind of surprised we haven't specifically singled this one out for Backstreet Boys, but larger than life. That's like maybe oh, my other favorite Backstreet yeah. Boys song. That's they had the weird ass yellow like robot suit sound in that video, I think, right? Like, yeah, I think it's yep. Strange, but yes, a good song. And then good he song. had a Spanish one, Subet a mi moto okay. by Claridad and Menudo. And I like looked oh, it up Menudo. on Spotify and listened to it. And it was like specifically the collab of Claridad and Menudo version of it. And it's a jam. I remember that's where Ricky Martin got his start too, I believe, was Menudo. Oh, yeah. 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 Ricky Martin totally has boy band vibes. That, oh, without that a doubt. Surprised me. Man, he uh -huh. he also had some jams. That that can be another topic for another day. Yeah. All right. Well, um, first off, before we let you go, anything you'd like to plug, anything you got coming up you'd like to share so we can send people your way? Well, I will just be over weekly on Tuesdays at uh, Peace, Love, and Baseball, which is about baseball, not specifically Cardinals baseball, but, you know, obviously plenty of Cardinals baseball because that's what I, I follow most closely. But I'm always open to suggestions, and I like hearing what people want to hear about because I love talking about baseball as a whole, and mm -hmm. I'm super interested in, like, the business of baseball and all of that. Um, but then sometimes we talk about fitness or we talk about education or we talk about musicians like mm -hmm. it's all kinds of stuff so i have been doing that for eight or nine months now and once a week on tuesdays we've got something coming your way uh you can follow me on twitter at kbird tweets and the link tree for everything to do with peace love and baseball is there but it's on spotify and apple podcasts and then bi-weekly on mondays i'm on the babes babes podcast with a couple yankees fans so Come hold down the fort with me, so I'm not left. Got to represent to... Chicago. Uh, yeah, you know, I got to Yorkers, represent right? the whole Midwest. Basically, yeah. is on my shoulders over there. So, no, but we just really are getting underway with that, and it's any and all things baseball, just from uh, you know representing women in the podcasting world and highlighting their place uh, in the sport and all that good stuff. So you can find us on Twitter at Babes Babes Pod. And it's on my link tree as well. So really just follow me at Kbird Tweets on Twitter and you'll find it all. Yeah, you are. We were, uh, I know, uh, Jake Banowski of Dinger's Cubs podcast. He's like, oh, man, he's like, Kelsey had some really good content on Twitter with the Cubs cards games. I'm like, I know that's why we're having her on. So you are you are definitely Cubs fans are taking notice. In a good way, not like, oh, God, she's a Cardinals fan. So yeah, well, I'm like, I, I don't want this bad blood no, between no. us Cubs and Cardinals fans. Like I said, I have Cubs fans in my family, right. and I think it's more fun when the teams – I know, like, you guys have been burnt one too many times, so I totally understand you being <laughs> like, can they just, like, quiet can down for bad, a season please? or two? Yeah, yeah. But I'm ready for the Cubs to be competitive again, mm -hmm. and – I, I like more players on the Cubs right now than I have in a really long time. Wow, so, okay. yeah. You, was Christopher Morrell the guy that you thought would be good oh my in God. boy bands? Because, come yeah. on. Oh, God. We didn't even talk about that. Yes. I had, I had Christopher Morrell and Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. Those were my two. Mm. Those were my two. So, what do you have any that you'd like to rattle off? Well, I tried to build mine around, like, the boy band formula, you know? So Oh, very, I, this like, is very high tech. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I might have thought it out a little too much, but okay. no. So I have Matt Carpenter, who was oh, on yeah. the Cardinals and then on the Yankees, and now he's on the Padres. Padres, yep. And then George Springer of the Blue Jays. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, Lars Newbar of International Super Stardom from Team Japan. Yes. Jazz Chisholm Jr., the he, face of MLB The Show. Yes. He's a character. He is. He yeah. is in... in um. Yeah, I saw his the cover and I'm like, oh man, I kind of want to buy a new version of the show, even though I don't have time to play video games. But yeah, but yeah, he is a pretty cool dude. And then Adley Rutschman was my like, you're Justin yes. Timberlake, you're Nick Carter. Yes. He's, he's that guy. He yeah. he reminds me of like a Joe Maurer in terms of a catcher. Like, yeah, you know, he's going to be good for a long time. Yeah, I, I had such a hard time. Like part of me just wanted to put random like people that I know wouldn't be good. Like put Mike Trout in front of a boy band. Like, let me see <laughs> right. Mr. No real personality. What We'd have to give offer? him the guitar that he could just, he could be the guy. Yeah. Him. Very solemn. Yeah. Had never make eye contact. Right. Um, yeah. I, th I think those are all really, really good. Yeah. Lars Newbar is such a cool dude. Like, I don't want to like Cardinals players, but anytime I saw him in the world baseball classic, I'm like, you go dude, you're, you're a cool guy. Like do something. Yeah. I want to see you do well. So yeah, there are certain guys you just can't not root for. And, He's, He's one, one of them. them. Well, again, thank you so much. You guys know where you can find Kelsey and we will be back more next week with more baseball and whatever. Take care, everybody. See you. All done.